Good morning, everyone. And a very warm welcome to worship on this day when we remember. The writer of the Book of Lamentations wrote this. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. We come to worship God on this day in the hymn number 511. Your hand, O God, has guided. Come before God in prayer, let us pray. Lord our God, we come to worship this day, knowing that your hand sustains all creation. We come reflecting on the glorious colours that surround us as the season of autumn, autumn begins to draw to a close. We marvel at the different colours of leaves as they swish and swirl around our feet, at the hue of the late autumn flowers, at the stars in the night sky. Living Lord, we meet you in the street, in the people that we meet. Your being surrounds us. 
open our eyes to the wonder of your creation. We give thanks this day for your faithfulness to your people in every land and in time, for your presence with them in the dark days that they have faced, and we come to praise you that no matter the challenges that lie before us, you have promised to be with us in our waking and our sleeping. As we come here on this Remembrance Sunday, we acknowledge before you that we have not always walked the paths that lead to peace. We have kept hold of the prejudices and assumption that the little others and bring about division. In our thoughts, words and actions, we have been selfish and unfeeling to the needs of others. When we have seen injustice in action, we have been silent. In so many ways, we have been less than you would want us to be. Help us, O Lord, to be the people you have called us to be. Eternal God, your mercy renews and refreshes us. We give you thanks and praise that we are your people, entrusted to bring your peace, a peace that passes all understanding to those whom we encounter. Hear us now as we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Good morning. That was a wee silent good morning. You've got a big good morning for me. Good morning. That was much better. A very big good morning, that's it. So how are you all today? Good. Good? Good. Good? Good. Oh, I think we've got some sleepy bunnies this morning. Uh Well, this is a special day here in both the church and in our community and in our country. Do we know what day it is today? Autumn. Autumn, yeah, you're right. Just about, just about out of autumn will be another couple of weeks and we'll be into winter. What day do you think it is? That's right, it's Remembrance Sunday and I see one or two people have got their poppy on. Now, mine keeps sliding on this, but here it is. It will maybe stay on to the end of the service. And do you know why we have a poppy? Because we remember those folks who died in wars, which are wars are horrible things, and we remember them by having a poppy. Now, this goes a long, long way back, way, way back, a hundred years or more. Can you imagine that? And in, when the First World War was happening at that time, there was soldiers fighting in a field called Flanders, and they had poppies growing all around in the grass. Even although it was war and it was all dug up, there was still the poppies still seemed to grow. And there was a very famous poem uh, written by a Canadian and I'm just going to tell you the first wee verse of it. And this Canadian, he was called Dr. McRae, but he, when he went off to war, he was a lieutenant colonel. And he saw all these poppies, and this is what he wrote. In Flanders field, the poppies blow between the crosses row and row. They mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely fly. So he was so, so impressed by the poppies that it made him write these lovely words. There are more verses to it. And there's all sorts of different poppies. 
Some ladies have got two poppies on. You've got a poppy that has a leaf on it. Mine's is just a wee plastic one. I tried to get one of these newfangled ones that you stick on, but I couldn't find any, so I had to take that one. But, you know, somebody made me a poppy, and I brought it to show you. And this is one that I hang on my door. And isn't it pretty if I can get it? It's stuck. There we go. So I hang it. I've got a little hook on my front door that I put my Christmas wreath on, and I leave the hook up all year round. So I just hung it up. And it's rather nice. It's two lovely felt poppies and sewed a button on them to get the black in the centre. Thought it was really nice. So we can have all different ways. I've seen cars that have had poppies on them. I've seen all sorts of different poppies. So I've brought you a special cross and a poppy. When I was in Canada two or three years ago, I managed to get a whole load of these. And I was thinking about Remembrance Sunday. And so this is like the white cross that John McCrae in his poem wrote about. So I've got four, and the reason I've got four is I used to have 20, and every time I went to a church and we did Remembrance Sunday, they disappeared. And no matter how many times I climbed into the organ loft where we used to store things, my crosses disappeared. But I thought four was good because that makes us think of our world, because you know, if you were needing directions in our world, what do we have? We have north, and we have south, and we have east, and we have west. So these crosses represent the whole of our world, really. And I wonder if you would like to come and place them down here in front of this, which is our memorial to the folks who died in this church in the First World War, and a remembrance in the second. Would anyone like to come and do this with me? Yes, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's two. I need two more volunteers. No more volunteers? Girls, no? Yeah. Three. I need one more volunteer. So I'm going to get everybody across. Thank you. And three. No more can't persuade anybody. Right, well, this will just have to be me. So as we put our crosses down here on the floor, we're remembering, remembering all the folk who go to the aid of others since the First World War right through to today where there are still conflicts and wars happening. So one by one, will we place our cross down there. And this is our last one that we'll put down. Thank you very much. That was very good of you to help me this morning. We're going to sing a song which comes from the Cameroon, and I'm not sure if it's one that we're very familiar with. It's one that I love. It's just a little song and it just reminds me about Jesus and all that he did for us. It's such a short song, I think. We'll sing the two verses and we'll sing it twice this morning.
Before our reading this morning, we'll remain seated and sing our prayer for understanding, number 716. This morning's Bible reading can be found in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. And it can be found in page 968 of the Pew Bible. Let's hear the word of God. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets 
who were before you. May God bless the reading of his word. We will now sing hymn number 264. I believe in the sun, even when it is not shining. These were wires discovered on the wall of a cellar during the Second World War. An unknown author who etched these words. I believe in the sun, even when it is not shining. And I believe in love, even when there's no one there. And I believe in God, even when he is silent. I believe that through any trial, there is always a way. But sometimes in the suffering and hopeless despair, my heart cries out for shelter, to know that someone's there. But a voice rises within me, saying, hold on, my child, I'll give you strength, I'll give you hope, just stay a little while. I believe in the sun, even when it is not shining, and I believe in love, even when there's no one there. But I believe in God, even when he is silent. I believe through any trial, that it's always a way. May there some day be sunshine. May there some day be happiness. May there some day be love. May there some day be peace. These words are words that transcend the years. They are just as relevant today as they were way back a hundred years ago, even in the Second World War of 1945. We believe in the Son, the Son of Man who came to earth as an infant, lived and died for our salvation. We believe in the Son of Man even when there seems an absence of light, of love in our world, when forces in our world endeavour to put out that light and spread darkness. On this day when we remember 
We remember the voice that says, My child, I'll give you strength. We remember the love of Christ when he said to one another, and when he said, Blessed are they that are peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. It is now the eleventh hour, so we make our act of remembrance. If you can, will you please stand? They shall grow not old, as they that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we shall remember them. We will remember them.
tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. We sing now for the healing of the nations, the hymn number 706. For the healing of the nations, Lord, we pray with one accord. Let us pray. Lord, my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. When we hear the word manifesto, our thoughts go to politics, and in our world of today, there is a great deal of politics going on with a great deal of confrontation and infighting. The word manifesto comes from the Italian word of the same spelling, meaning public declaration, explaining past actions and announcing the motive for forthcoming ones. It can also be a declaration of policy and aims, especially if one is issued before an election. Would it be too much of a leap to suggest that the words that we heard this morning in the Gospel according to Matthew were in fact Christ's Kingdom Manifesto? Our leading, one leading writer suggests this, and I think it is an interesting point. Was Jesus making his public declaration of what was in the past and announcing what should happen in the future. Indeed, today, Remembrance Sunday, 
It is a day when we remember the past, but we also look to the future. Our reading this morning is Jesus' authoritative teaching that has become known as the Sermon on the Mount. Possibly the most famous sermon in all religious literature. And it's often one that's asked on quiz shows. It is only in the Gospel of Matthew that we read of this event, this teaching on the hillside. The nearest we come to it in the other Gospels is in Luke, where we read about the Sermon on the Plain. It is the ideal ethic for which believers must strive even while recognising that they will fall short of living up to it. It's a set of ethics that were not forgotten or were changed to suit future times. Jesus' words were for that day and for always. The words of the sermon on the Mount were primarily for those already committed to following him, his disciples. And scholars have come down on the side that they were rather challenging words, being words that were uh, destined for his disciples only. However, there were many people on that day and Jesus sat down with the crowds. The scene was set in his ascending the hill and solemnly sitting down to address his disciples and the crowd of interested bystanders. The Good News translation of Christ's words that have become known as the Beatitudes uses the word happy. Happy are they who are poor, meek or mourn and so on. Other translations such as the King James Version or the New International Version of the Bible that we use here used the word blessed or blessed. Now I have to admit I am the traditionalist here and prefer blessed are they. For many happy is a very suitable translation but it just doesn't sit well with me. Perhaps because when I learned the Beatitude, it was the King James Version of the Bible that was used. The word blessed or blessed comes from the Greek makarios. And Jesus uses the word to describe those who do God's will. Those who live by the Beatitudes would find peace and harmony in God's presence and in God's love. The late Billy Graham called the Beatitudes the beautiful attitudes. Beautiful attitudes, well, it's certainly a way of remembering them. But it does beg a question. What was so beautiful about them? Are they really so beautiful? Is it really beautiful to be poor, to be mourning, or to be persecuted? Just three of the eight Beatitudes where, if I'm honest, I wouldn't feel very blessed. The language of the Beatitudes can present us with some difficulties, but maybe if we turn them on their heads, we can see something different. The good news for the poor in spirit is that they will inherit the kingdom of heaven. No matter what happened on earth, the kingdom of heaven will be open to them. The good news for those who mourn the loss of someone is that they shall be comforted by the compassion of God. It doesn't mean that in life we will not be faced with trying times, nor that we will not lose those who we love. What we are assured of is comfort through the compassion of God. The good news for the pure in heart is that their lives have been transformed 
by the grace of God. They have had a new birth, have found faith. To be pure of heart means to be free of all selfish intentions and self-seeking desires. Now that is a lovely goal to have. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The good news here is the definition of mercy. It is a loving disposition towards those who suffer distress. Love, compassion and forgiveness. Love towards each other will bring peace in our lives. An idea of the corporate works of mercy is to feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, and comfort the imprisoned, to visit the sick, and to bury the dead. These were all works that Christ was to show in his ministry, indeed giving us a blueprint to live by. And what about the peacemakers? They shall be called the children of God. The good news is that if we are at peace with God, then we will live in peace with all men and women. Oh, but if that were true, if we could live with, a, in, with peace in our hearts, The world was shocked when on the 24th of February 2022 the Ukraine was invaded and from that day there has been no peace for the people of the Ukraine. The number injured in this conflict have reached horrific numbers, those who fight and those who live in the villages, towns and cities. And it still goes on. Many die and still no sense of ceasefire of recon or reconciliation. And on the 7th of October, the reality of war again hit the media platforms. The invasion and killing of the Israelis and taking of hostages. The response to that action by Israel has resulted in great devastation on the Gaza Strip. During the week, the UN Secretary General said that the protection of civilians must be paramount in the conflict. And he warned that the Gaza Strip was becoming a graveyard for children. Harsh words that caused prolific responses throughout the world. But today, we are still no nearer to a ceasefire or a pause that many have called for. Sadly, these are only two examples of the world in which we live, but it's a world that is never at peace. Every week in our prayers for the world, we pray for peace. The troubles of our world can seem historically unsolvable. Perhaps we can ask, so why do we pray if there is no resolution? We pray because Jesus commanded us to live with a love that is unlimited and unconditional and to seek a peaceful way of living together. A peaceful way of living with all men, women and children. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons or children of God. As we stand here today on our day of remembrance, the words of the Sermon on the Mount are good news for each and every one of us. They speak to us of what a world could look like when following the teachings of our Lord. And as we look out onto a rather fragile and turbulent world, we pray for peace between nations. 
tolerance between creeds, love and compassion in our own community, our own country, and in our world. All glory be to him. Amen. The choir sing our morning anthem, Lord, make of servants of your peace. We come together in prayer now, in the words of the churches together in Great Britain and Ireland, as we pray for our world. Let us pray. We come today in thanksgiving for the freedom we have in our world, for the opportunity to walk and live in that freedom. Lord God, we come today to remember, and so we pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict. May, may God give peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. For those who love them in death as in life, May God give peace. God give peace for all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all we pray for their safe return. May God give peace. God give peace for civilian women and children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatred of humanity. May God give peace.
God, give peace for peacemakers and for peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. May God give peace. God give peace for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, our refuge and our strength, now and forever. Amen. Can I say good morning to everybody from the pulpit today as I need to dash up the road this morning to Baldermit. We bring our time of remembrance and fellowship to a close as we sing the hymn, Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us, cheered us on our way.
grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord. And to us, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God save the king.